Hello and welcome. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Dr. Jeff Stanley and I'm a physician with the Verta Clinic. And today we'll be talking about how type 2 diabetes is a reversible condition. Um, so in in my experience as a physician, you know, I've seen the, the difficulty that patients have with trying to manage prediabetes and type 2 diabetes. And, you know, what I've seen in the past is that despite people's best efforts, despite trying their best, um, they, you know, eating less, exercising more, people tend to gain weight over time. Um, they tend to have low energy and just not feel well. And then with time, people are put on increasing numbers of diabetes medications, which can be costly painful and actually have a number of their own side effects and negative effects that we'll talk about later today. So again, to give you a little bit more of my background, um, I got my MD at the University of Southern California and after graduating, I did my residency in internal medicine and I'm also certified in uh, obesity medicine. And after graduating, I was a primary care doctor for a number of years and worked with patients in sort of the traditional paradigm of diabetes management. And what I saw over time was that people were put on increasing numbers of medications and truly weren't getting better. And so what happened to me was I actually pulled upon my own experience, which is that I struggled with weight in the past. And I found that personally, if I limited my carbohydrates, I was able to lose weight and keep it off. And I've actually eaten a low carbohydrate diet myself self for about 15, um, 15 years now. And what I saw was that it worked for me and I wanted to learn more and more about how it could work for my own patients. I started using this approach with my own patients and started to see incredible results. So now I've been working with Verda for a few years and I see that on a daily basis when I see my patients come back, um, they are healthier, they are on less medications, um, they're on, they have a lower hemoglobin A1C and they just feel better in general. And that's um, so rewarding as a physician to be able to see that. And so again, we're here with Verta Health, which is the first online specialty medical clinic that's been proven to reverse type 2 diabetes safely and sustainably, and importantly, without medications or surgery. And so this is a picture of some of our team that's working tirelessly to reverse diabetes and to help people reclaim their health. Um, I'd also like to point out in this picture that we were fortunate to have a few of our Verda uh, patients join us for a, a company offsite. And you can see um, this handsome gentleman off to the left here is Mike, and he's a Verda patient that actually works with one of my colleagues, Dr. Scahill. And Mike has had incredible results with Verda. He's been able to get off a large number of his medications, improve his blood glucose, lose weight, and have a number of other health effects. Um, but rather than tell you myself, um, I've actually, Mike has been um, happy, um, happy to join us today and volunteer his time to be able to tell you his own story about how he has been able to vastly improve his diabetes. So thank you again so much for joining us, Mike, and I'll let you take it away. Thank you so much, Jeff. It's wonderful to be here this morning, and uh, it's wonderful to be a part of the Verda um, uh, success stories of patients. Um, I'm a 33-year diabetic. I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes at 19, and <clears throat> then I started insulin about 22 years ago. Gosh, I was on all the old ones, Actos, Bietta, you know, of course, the metformin through the whole thing, then started uh, Atlantis and then started on Humalog um, and uh, have been insulin dependent for, as I say, about 22 years now. And then um, I was up to 300 units of Humalog a day, which is the short range insulin, and then 100 units of Atlantis a day, which is the long term insulin. And I was taking a drug called Jardians. And my brother was in San Francisco where your headquarters are and saw a presentation by your executive team at a venture capitalist company and, um, and said, before he even came out of the meeting room, this is not a yes or no. He said, my childhood name is Mickey. He said, Mickey, you have to call this company. And, and I talked to Cami, who is our host this morning, uh, about a year and a half ago, a year, a few months ago. I started on Verda a year ago, and within four months, um, well, it took me off of the Jardians right away, and in about four months' time, I was off the Humalog, um, 
and now I'm down to about 25 units of Lantus a day and metformin. Um, my A1Cs after taking all of those drugs were 8.4 um, and it just looked like I was an uncompliant diabetic and suffered from neuropathy and ended up with a Charcot foot, which is uh, where your foot collapses because of your Achilles tendon and the numbness. Um, and so uh, things weren't looking very well for me. And so as I said, four months later to be off of Humalog, to be off of Jardians was incredible. Um, and after um, not much more time, I was off my statin. My cholesterol went from 320 down to 112. Um, so I was able to get off the drugs, um, get off the dependency of them. After um, being a diabetic for 33 years, being in a diabetic reversal, um, like I am, my endocrinologist was absolutely stunned and is now even recommending some of her patients to Verda that she thinks would be a good success um, for the program. But really, it's for everybody. I mean, I always say, if I can do it, anybody can do it. So Jeff, um, everything that you were observing before and, and your obesity practice, um, I've also lost 55 pounds, which has been great, um, and continuing down the path of losing more weight. So. It really has worked amazingly for my life, and it's given me a hope. I mean, I was going down the slippery slope of diabetics. You know what that is. And to have a reversal and now to really be able to think, oh, has really uh, been amazing in my life. And I can't thank you and all the team at Verda. And it was a pleasure to be at your conference, your meeting. Um, three patients there, and to meet all of you was um, outstanding. And wow, what a team of people. I'm constantly impressed with um, my coach, Catherine, who texts me 12 times a day and has been so active as part of my um, diabetic reversal. And uh, the whole team has just been amazing. I can't thank you. Well, thank you again, Mike, so much for, for telling your story story. Um, you know, I, I tell people all the time that I, I quite honestly feel like I have the best job in the world because I get to see, again, um, patients and people that we work with just regain there and do it themselves. You know, it's not a magic pill. It's not a, a surgery. You know, this is people taking their health into their own hands and making these changes. And so I think, you know, rightfully so, our patients feel a ton of pride over what they've done. And so you should be incredibly proud about it, how far you've come and, you know, where, where you're going to continue going in the future. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. I can't even believe I don't have to carry all those syringes and vials of insulin and I had a little refrigerator, a portable refrigerator everywhere I went just to be portable and now not to carry any of that is really been amazing. Yeah, it's fantastic. I can't tell you what a difference. <laughs> All right, well, again, yeah. Story with my neuropathy, oh, yeah. my neuropathy has actually been reversing. I have all the feeling left back in my hands now and even the feeling in my feet are coming back. So I've actually had a nerve reversal as well, which I never met a neurologist that said that that would happen. <laughs> well, well, we'll certainly take it. Um, again, well, yeah, thank you so much for, for sharing your story. And hopefully, you know, someone on the call here has been inspired to, to take con uh, control of their health as well. Um, so we'll, we'll see you soon, Mike. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone at Verda. Have a good day. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, so um, now we're going to go a little bit into just the kind of the outline of the rest of the talk. So I'm going to talk to you about um, type 2 diabetes uh, and just some of the background um, around the disease. Um, talk with about the problem with the dietary guidelines. So some of how what we were told to eat over time actually may have contributed to the diabetes and obesity epidemics. Um, I'm going to tell you about why exercise and calorie restriction just doesn't work in the long term for, for most patients. Um, I'm going to tell you about the danger of um, some pharmaceuticals, so some of the medications used to treat diabetes. And then I'm going to go into how we at Verda utilize a different approach. Um, and again, we look at reversing type 2 diabetes and not just managing it. Um, so if anyone has to drop off the webinar at any point, um, I would direct you to just go to that um, website in the bottom right corner, go.vertahealth.com. Um, that allows you actually to um, enter. There's an online calculator that shows you what your results 
would be expected to look like with Verda um, and how quickly you might see diabetes reversal or in, um, improvement in your diabetes. Um, and finally, we're going to save some time for questions at the end. So as questions pop into your mind, write them down or think of them, and um, we'll definitely try to get to as many as possible at the end of the presentation. Uh, we're also going to have a couple of quick little quizzes as we go through here. And this is just to, to get you thinking and to get an idea of kind of what people's baseline knowledge is around diabetes. Uh, so our first question we have here is, what percentage of Americans do you think have either type 2 diabetes or prediabetes? And I'll give you a little bit of time to think about that and answer. Okay, thank you for voting. Uh, so to give you an idea of the scope of this problem, um, basically we see that about four in 10 US adults have prediabetes and about one in seven have type two diabetes. And what that means is that if you voted 52% of adults in America have type two diabetes or prediabetes, uh, then you're right. And that's just a staggering number. I mean, this means that the majority of adults in America have either di diabetes, type two diabetes or prediabetes. And what we see is that the standard of care, uh, what's generally used in most clinics, is really a focus on management. And what that means is that, so let's look at this uh, quote from the American Diabetes Association. So they say that type two usually gets worse over time. And even if you don't need medications at first, uh, you may need them later on. Um, and then at Kaiser Permanente, a large HMO, they looked at more than 100,000 patients and they saw that there was a 0.1% diabetes remission rate. This means people who were able to get off of their diabetes medications, normalize their blood sugar, and keep it that way. Um, and that means that the average uh, physician may never see one of their patients who is able to reverse or put their diabetes into remission. Um, and again, this is something that we see on a daily basis. And I do want to highlight our amazing outcomes and what we've seen. So, I mean, it's always great to hear stories like Mike's, um, and we have a number of stories like that, but it's also important to know that these are not just individual one-off success stories. You know, we're seeing that uh, we're running a clinical trial in Lafayette, Indiana, and in clinical trials, all of your data is made um, public to the uh, reviewers, and they're able to make sure that this is true information and that you're really getting these results. And so what these results are showing is that 87 percent of patients reduced or eliminated insulin. And this was just in our first 10 weeks. We saw 56% of patients who reduced their A1C uh, below the diabetes level, so their average blood glucose. And then as we carried this data on, we also see uh, about a 12% of body weight lost at six months. And so what that means is that if someone started at 300 pounds, um, you know, they would lose more than 30 pounds in just six months. And again, that's on average. So a lot of people lose quite a bit more than that. So now that you have some of the baseline and background about diabetes, I want to talk about, you know, how, how did we get into this mess? And a lot of you may recognize this blast from the past, which is our uh, food pyramid. And this was the basis for our U.S. dietary guidelines back in the late 1970s and early 1980s, and it carried on until just recently. And what we saw is that people were told to base their foundation of their diet around bread, cereal, rice, and pasta, so carbohydrates, and six to 11 servings of that a day. And a lot of people don't realize this, but the one type of food that we actually don't need to eat that our bodies are able to produce is carbohydrates. So we based our entire diet off of one, the one nutrient that is actually not essential. And so we had these guidelines that we told to our you know, people across the country, and we said to eat low fat, eat low calorie, and the food companies obliged, and they made things like the Yoplait Light or the Slim Fast. And you know, a lot of you probably recognize these or maybe still eat them. But the Yoplait Light, for instance, you know, when they make a light yogurt, they take all the fat out of it. And it tastes terrible unless you add in sugar. So this blueberry Yoplait Light yogurt, which you know, looks uh, very healthy. Look, you can see there it has two points on Weight Watchers. Um, that actually has as much sugar as a can of soda in some cases.
And so what we saw is that, you know, the, the guidelines were published and people were told to eat more carbohydrates. Um, there's data that, that shows that people followed these guidelines and reduced their fat intake and tried to reduce their, their meat and so forth. Um, but what's happened since that time is we've seen that the, um, the percentage of people with diabetes has just skyrocketed. So we saw that, you know, back in the 1970s, it was maybe two, 3% of Americans had diabetes. And that number, you know, it's over 7% now and just continues to increase with time. So to go again, back to think about the food pyramid and the different things that can make up our diet, it's good to get a, just a good baseline and think about what are the various types of food of nutrients that make up our diet. So we've got carbohydrates, fat, protein, and alcohol. And I always want to give the disclaimer that no, we're not saying that alcohol should be a major part of your diet, but it is considered a nutrient and something that we take into account when we look at people's diets. And then the question that we have to ask is, are all calories equal? So, you know, remember we can eat these different nutrients and those nutrients have different effects on our blood sugar. So the answer is no, that all calories are not equal. Um, and what we see here is that carbohydrates have the greatest effect on our blood sugar. So the, the one that we don't need to eat is driving blood sugar up. And that's again associated with diabetes and with poor control of blood sugar. We also see here that the one nutrient that doesn't raise blood sugar is fat, the thing that we've been told not to eat for decades. And so another quick quiz here, um, which macronutrient of those listed, the carbohydrate, protein, and fat, requires the most insulin for our bodies? I'll give you a second to answer. May have accidentally given you the answer there, but feel, feel free to still put in your answer. Okay, great. So what we see is that carbohydrates cause the largest insulin response in our body. And again, fat has the least. So when you eat foods with fat in them, your body releases very little insulin. When we, release, when we eat carbohydrates, our body releases a large amount of insulin. And that could be good and bad. So the reason we use this key analogy is that insulin works very much like a key in that it unlocks our cells and tells our cells to take in glucose. So when your blood glucose rises, your body releases insulin and it then tells your cells to basically take in, blood glu um, take in glucose from the bloodstream and normalize blood sugars. So that's good. If that didn't happen, we would have toxically high levels of glucose floating around in our bloodstream at all times. Um, but there's another piece to this. So in addition to unlocking our cells and telling them to take up glucose, we also see that insulin is our fat storage hormone. So it actually tells our fat cells to store fat and to stop burning fat. And so you can think about what's going on when you eat a meal with a lot of carbohydrates. So our insulin levels go up. Again, it, the, the good part is that it tells our, um, our body to, to get rid of glucose from the bloodstream. So that's, that's good. But the bad part is that it also was telling us during this whole time to store fat and our body obliges. So let's, let's look at blood glucose in someone without diabetes. So that would be about 100 milligrams per deciliter on the blood glucose meter. Um, for reference, we have about five liters of blood in our entire body. Um, and in that entire um, five liters, with a normal blood glucose, you would see that you have about five grams of glucose floating around, or about one teaspoon of sugar in that entire five liters. Now let's think about a food that's been you know, considered very healthy for, for many people, which is a cup of brown rice. Uh, so in that cup of brown rice, you have 45 grams of carbohydrates, which breaks down very quickly um, in your stomach and is absorbed as about nine teaspoons of sugar. So think about that. 
when you have that cup of brown rice or that 45 grams of carbohydrates, you have this huge influx of glucose into our bloodstream. And what does our body do with that? Well, it releases insulin and tells our body to, to, to store the glucose, right? Um, but remember, we have different types of carbohydrate tolerances. So let's think about the person on the left. And we all know this jerk. This is the person who can eat whatever they want. They can eat you know, nothing but cereal and bread and pasta, and they stay thin and healthy. And that person has a high carbohydrate tolerance. So their body quickly gets rid of the glucose and doesn't store fat. Um, but most of us fall into this range of the person on the right with a low carbohydrate tolerance. So that person eats the same cup of brown rice that follows the guidelines they've been given, but their, their glucose levels stay elevated for longer, their insulin levels stay elevated for longer, and they store fat during that time. And I think this is a, a good illustration about why diabetes is not your fault. It's the same food that you're eating as other people, but people have a different response to that food. Let's look at this in terms of the cycle of insulin resistance. So when you eat carbohydrates over your tolerance, Normal of, in, of increasingly elevated amounts of insulin and increasing resistance to that insulin. So now that we know how that vicious cycle sets up from sort of a food standpoint, let's think about what the standard management of diabetes looks like. And what we see is that there's a focus to reduce blood sugar, which is good, um, but the way that that's um, traditionally done is by increasing insulin, so through injections or medications, um, by indirectly reducing blood sugar through some other diabetes meds like metformin, which you may be familiar with, and then by decreasing body weight. So we tell people, eat less, exercise more. If that doesn't work, then we consider something like bariatric surgery. So let's talk about why exercise and calorie restriction doesn't work in the majority of patients. So remember that first step is when somebody is newly diagnosed with diabetes or prediabetes, they'll go see their primary care doctor or another physician, and they're told, you know, okay, well, you're in this diabetes range, so let's really work hard first to lose weight. So we recommend you start an exercise program, uh, you see a dietitian to get a, uh, a diet plan, um, and then, you know, if that doesn't work, we could always refer you to the surgeon to, to think about bariatric surgery. Let's talk about why that doesn't work. Um, so I think a really dramatic example of that is the Biggest Loser study. So a lot of people probably remember the Biggest Loser. Uh, it was a, a television show that's thankfully been canceled. Um, but basically it used um, severe calorie restrictions, kind of a starvation diet, um, extreme exercise, um, and sort of a competition where people would be weighed in public and, and compete against one another. And what we saw is that some people lost a ton of weight in the short term on that. So an example, well, here's one of the champions, Sean. He started at 444 pounds. Um, by the finale, when he won, he was at 289 pounds. So that's fantastic, right? Um, but now, a few years later, he's up at 450 pounds. So he is beyond his starting weight. Um, and the really cruel part about it is that actually his metabolic rate, so the, the rate at which his body burns calories, has been measured at 458 fewer calorie day than you would expect for someone who is his weight, 450 pounds. And what this also means is that he probably damaged his metabolism to the point where he now burns less calories than he did when he started. So he actually damaged his metabolism by over-exercising and under-eating. And the big take-home point of this, and this is what I learned when I initially tried losing weight in college, was that eat less and exercise more does not work. So now that we look at the, we've looked at the sort of diet and exercise portion of it, let's talk about uh, some of the dangers or potential dangers of taking medications to treat diabetes. So after uh, uh, someone you know, tries their best with exercise and diet and is unable to improve their diabetes, generally the second step, so about three months later when you see your primary care doc again, is to prescribe medications. Um, and that is generally done, again, through through oral medications that can indirectly reduce blood sugar or directly through in increasing insulin um, by injecting insulin. So I think this is a very striking clinical trial that looks at you know, why this may not be the best approach. Um, so the ACCORD trial, which was a large trial of over 8,000 patients, and it was meant to really prove whether in um, intensive 
uh, insulin therapy and intensive blood sugar management uh, was able to improve outcomes in people with diabetes. And so what they saw is that you know, they, they treated people in this intensive arm with high levels of insulin and really got their blood sugars well controlled. And so the first thing you see, not, not surprisingly, is that in this intensive arm, the, the arm of the trial who was getting more insulin, they had more weight gain. And that makes sense, right? We just talked a little while ago about insulin as a fat storage hormone. So in people who are injecting insulin, they're basically just telling their body, store fat, store fat. And so that was unsurprising, but the thing that actually caused them to stop the trial early was that they saw that the intensive therapy arm, the arm that was getting more insulin and had better blood sugars, actually was dying at a faster rate. So they had more death from any cause than the standard therapy arm. And this raised some major questions and red flags about whether you know, giving people higher amounts of medications and insulin was helping them or harming them. And so a question we'd like to pose to you is, do you think your diabetes medications are helping you get better? I'll give you just another second to answer. Okay, so yeah, so about 50% of you thought that, you know, your diabetes medications aren't necessarily making you feel better, and helping you get better as well. So now that we've reviewed, you know, why in most cases extreme calorie restriction and extreme exercise don't work, why pharmaceutical medications may be causing harm, um, let's look at a, a different approach to how we at Verda work to reverse type 2 diabetes. So first, for just some basic background, um, you know, diagnosing type 2 diabetes, uh, what we look at is, first of all, hemoglobin A1c, so it's a, a three-month average of blood glucose greater than 6.5%, uh, fasting plasma glucose of greater than 126, um, or a, a little used test, the oral glucose tolerance test, where you drink a glucose solution and look to see what your blood glucose response is. And so if this is the criteria for diagnosing diabetes, uh, what do we think? Uh, diabetes reversal means. And so what diabetes reversal means is that we are able to reverse the signs and symptoms of type 2 diabetes, normalize blood sugar um, without medications. And again, so you can look at different ways of doing this. There's the, the sort of standard management approach, which is usually people get kind of slowly worse over time, or we can use this direct common sense approach where we directly reduce blood sugar by significantly reducing carbohydrate intake. And then we're actually able to train our body to rely on burning fat. So we have two options here. There's the option on the left, which is eating carbohydrates over your personal tolerance. And this differs for everybody. Um, you know, some people won the genetic lottery and they can eat whatever they want. But again, most of us, that's not the case. Um, and then we have the option on the right, which is reversal of type two diabetes, um, done through the and very common sense approach of eating carbohydrates under your personal tolerance, allowing your body to set up this virtuous cycle of needing less insulin, becoming more sensitive to the insulin that's around, and basically working to heal your metabolism. And let's talk a little bit about some of the, the baseline um, science behind how this works and how we are able to teach our bodies to burn fat. Um, so if you look at this diagram here, you can see that basically dietary fat, so the fat that we eat, things like salmon or butter or cheese, um, or the fat that is just living in our fat cells, um, that is able to be converted by the liver um, to a, a substance that is, or a, that's known as, that are known as ketones. And ketones, basically are able to serve as a fuel for our brain, our heart, 
and our muscles. And this allows what we call metabolic flexibility, which means that our body is able to burn both glucose, which again is always gonna be around and it's something that our body can, um, can manufacture, um, in addition to ketones, um, which gives you the ability to skip a meal if you need or you know, eat it on, on your own time schedule. And again, I want to bring it back to our clinical trial and the results that we have seen in our own patients. So let's look at this, the study that we've been um, putting on in, in Lafayette, Indiana. So we have about 262 people living with type 2 diabetes. And in this trial, we've been working with them closely to reduce medications, help them to lose weight, and to normalize blood glucose. And to bring you back to these outcomes, what we've seen and published in our data is that we saw again, 87% of patients reduced their insulin, 56% of people got their A1C below the diabetes level, and we had just 12% weight loss at six months. And what all this means is that our approach, our goal is to reverse type two diabetes and not just manage it. And more broadly, our specific goal is to reverse type 2 diabetes in 100 million people by 2025. And to do that, we're leveraging a number of approaches. So one thing you see here is Dr. Steve Finney and Dr. Jeff Volek. So they're our scientific co-founders, and they have been publishing data on low-carbohydrate and ketogenic diets for decades and have published hundreds of papers on this approach. And then in the center, we have Sami Inkinen, our CEO and founder. And he started the real estate company Trulia and has expertise in technology and in um, remote um, access to smartphones and um, ways that we can basically work with people on a remote basis and not have to bring them directly into a clinic. And so we leverage these in combination. So the science, which again has been around for decades and has been shown to be effective with the technology, which allows us to deliver this in the comfort of your own home. And this allows us to get numbers like this. So 56% of people reducing their A1C below the diabetes range. And I think the thing that that's really important to stress here is that's after just 70 days on Verda. So that is a very quick response. And that's why people are able to stick with this so well, because it's not this long slog towards getting better. People get better quickly, and then they keep that, that improvement um, over time. And we do it through this common sense approach of directly reducing blood sugar through what we eat. And it's looking at food as medicine. So if what we are putting in our mouth, what we're putting in our body has such a dramatic effect on our blood glucose, on our insulin levels, on our need for medications, then we can truly look at food as medicine. So we can, you know, what we eat can determine whether or not we need to take pharmaceuticals. Now, I'd like to give you a little bit more information as to how we directly use our technology, our medical supervision, and our entire program to help our patients and to really put our patient at the center of our approach. So here we have actually a picture of one of my own patients, Wilma, who has been able to get off of all of her insulin, lose 60 pounds, and normalize her blood sugar, and has been with us now for more than a year and a half. And so the first thing we utilize is biomarker tracking. So people are testing their blood glucose, their ketones, um, other markers, and entering that into our app. So that is seen by your health coach who continually monitors that data and offers input and support. So if blood glucose is going high for some reason, your coach can help troubleshoot what you may have eaten that caused that. Um, if your weight loss is stalling, they can help work with you on that. Um, and then also they can just help with the day-to-day -day motivational aspects of things. And that's actually a picture of Catherine, who was uh, Mike's coach, who he mentioned earlier today. Um, then we have your Verda physician. And so your physician, through regular telemedicine appointments, so basically through a uh, FaceTime or Skype type of uh, um, program, we're able to have regular visits with you. We're also, importantly, we're continually monitoring that same data that your coach is seeing. So we're able to intervene if all of a sudden you're doing great with the program, you've cut out your carbohydrates, your blood glucose goes way down. Well, then to be safe, we need to cut down your insulin. And we can do that the minute that it's needed. So not waiting for three months to see your primary care doctor. We do that on the same day and sometimes um, change medications multiple times in one day. Um, and it's also important to note that we communicate that information back with your primary care doctor. So we keep you in the loop um, and we keep your, your primary care and your care team in the loop as to what you're doing with your health. 
Uh, we also use um, online resources, so recipes, videos, guides, and those are all available at the tip of your finger through your app um, or through your home computer. And then finally, we have an optional patient community online, and that allows people to share struggles, share wins, recipes, um, and to just be, um, ser serve as a form of support for each other during this time. And we've seen that, that you know, some, some patients prefer not to do the online community, but those that do um, find it to be incredibly helpful to uh, help with motivation and to you know, stick with the, the changes that they've made. And so all this, this technology that we use, this allows us to keep our patient retention very high. So a lot of you may be watching and saying, well, yeah, sure, this sounds great, but I mean, can anybody stick with this? Or I don't know if I, I could stick with this. Um, and so what we see is that 91% of our patients in our trial um, were still on the program at 10 weeks. And that's good, but amazingly, we see that 89% were still on our, on our, at six months. So this means that people who are able to make it through that initial you know, few weeks, and again, almost all of our patients do, um, that then they are able to stick with it and they get, they get these quick results. They lose weight, they feel better, they get off meds, and that enables, enables them to, to stick with it. Uh, it also doesn't hurt that we don't use calorie counting. Um, we tell our patients to eat delicious and real foods until satisfied, and we don't require exercise. Now, if people are already exercising or love it, then of course, that's great, and you can stick with that. Um, we just don't feel like people need to punish themselves on the treadmill or work on burning X number of calories, um, because really it starts with using food as medicine. And then as you start feeling better, adding exercise is fantastic. Um, I do want to do a quick little disclaimer or word of caution, and that is that, you know, in watching this or in reading online, you, you know, this may sound fantastic to you, um, but we also, we want to make sure that people who are on medications that can lower their blood glucose or their blood pressure, or those who have ongoing medical conditions, um, work with a physician when they're making these diet changes. Um, the reason being that these diet changes can be very powerful. Um, they can quickly reduce blood glucose. And if you are taking insulin as well as cutting out all your carbohydrates, um, there's a, a real danger of having a uh, dangerously low blood glucose level. And in, in severe cases, that can actually be deadly. Um, so we recommend that you, you know, work with your physician or avert a physician if you're planning on making any of these changes. So I think this is a great contrast to be able to look at the standard approach of diabetes management versus the approach to diabetes reversal. Um, so with management, what we see over time, and many of you have probably experienced this, I'm guessing, so we see increased medications, uh, we see increase in weight, again, despite your best efforts, um, expenses going up. So a lot of people are starting to see increasing numbers, um, amounts of copay that they're having to pay for their insulin and for other medications. Um, in addition, we see that the eating options are limited. So people are told, eat nothing but salad with nonfat dressing and you know, eat 500 calories a day. And that's just not sustainable. Um, and then they're told that exercise is required. Um, and I think a lot of people would much rather take the, the Verda approach, which is reducing meds, reducing weight, reducing expenses, not worrying about calorie counting, and exercising if you feel like it. And now I'd like to, um, to can encourage you to visit our website at go.vertahealth.com. And this is just to be able to, you can plug in some of your numbers and get an idea of you know, what sort of improvements you might expect at 10 weeks into our program and beyond. Um, and I think it's a really good way to get an idea of, you know, a lot of people think, well, that's not me. And you know, to, to be honest with you, this, is, this could be you. And this is what we see in our trial. And this is what we see in our patients. Um, so there, there's no obligation. You can go check it out, enter your data. If you want to find more information, then that's great. And we would love to work with you again to take back control of your health.